In discussions of ionization energy, we focused on the energy required to eject an electron from the atom. In this video, we're going to look at the energy released when an electron is added to the atom. That's known as electron affinity. So electron affinity is defined as the energy released when a neutral atom gains an electron in the gas phase. And this idea of released is very important. When we add an electron to an atom to form an anion, there is energy that is released. Energy is kind of a product of this process. And the reason for that is the Coulombic attraction, ultimately, between the negatively charged electron and the positive nucleus of A. In rare cases, the positive charge in the nucleus is completely shielded by existing electrons in the atom, and so electron affinity is actually positive. But for the most part, we'll see electron affinities that are less than zero. There's energy released when an electron is added to the atom. Like ionization energy, electron affinity is typically measured on a per mole basis in kilojoules per mole of atoms to which we add an electron. And what we find is that electron affinities tend to be much smaller than ionization energies. In thinking about what trend to expect for electron affinity, we might imagine that since the atom is gaining rather than losing an electron in this process, we might expect that electron affinities show the opposite trends from ionization energies. Let's find out if that's the case. So here again is a plot that shows you electron affinity as a function of atomic number with all of the elements labeled. If we follow the general trend that we're seeing here, we kind of get an upward rise followed by an abrupt decrease, followed by another upward rise and an abrupt decrease, and on and on as we go. So again, this is periodic behavior. It's got that kind of nice sawtooth shape going on. Again, we see that in general, although it's a little bit less clear cut, we've got a decrease in electron affinity as we move across to increasing atomic number, but within a particular series, we see an increase. So there's an increase and then a rapid dip and then a slightly lower increase, so on and so forth, giving us actually the same trend that we saw for ionization energy. Here are the trends shown in electron affinity in a more graphical form where a more deep purple color indicates a larger electron affinity. In general, we see that across a series of elements on the periodic table, we get increasing electron affinity, and as we move down, we get decreasing electron affinity. As we move from, say, fluorine to sodium, we get an abrupt decrease in electron affinity. This corresponds to that downward fall in the sawtooth wave shape here, here, and here. Just like we saw for ionization energy, among elements that correspond within two different periods, electron affinity decreases as we move to heavier elements. The halogens are probably the best example of that. If we look at chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine, notice the lighter purple color as we move downward. Let's ask the same question we did about ionization energy. What do these trends suggest about the behavior of electrons in atoms? What's interesting about the halogens in particular is that we can tell from ionization energies that the halogens have seven electrons in their outermost kind of group of electrons here. Adding another electron to a halogen atom gives the halogen a total number of eight electrons out here. And so there appears to be something special about this number of electrons, eight. What these data also seem to suggest is that we, as we move across a period, we get elements that are more strongly attracted to electrons. We're going to bring this trend into more focus when we talk about electronegativity here in a bit. 